Just play. Hey everyone, welcome back. We are actually continuing our fourth session now of Eye of Alos. Eye of Ulos, sorry. <laughs> the Eye of Ulos, and it's written by James Ryan as well. So it looks like he has been writing the last four at the moment. Right, okay. Uh, have everything set up. Most of the XPs are here, and then the encounter tokens. Uh, and then gold and play limits. We died once, as you remember last time. It just not was very um. It was very bad because it took almost like nine XP from us because we rolled bad as well. I have set up as well all the titles that we have accumulated from the last three ventures. So hopefully we can now get through it. Let's continue. After a long night in Undercity, purging an outbreak of vampirism, you return with Commander Zalik and find the capital in a state of unrest. An explosion shakes Taran's arena and you hear screams spreading through the streets. While your commander fears a draggle assault, you know a different group is behind this violence. Surely the Starlit Door are carrying out their plot to attack Sabek. Suddenly, a second boom shakes the city. Streaks of purple energy crackle in the sky, opening an interplanar rift to strange heavens and the red moons of another world. Your commander turns to you. No rift can form without an object from another plane. He says, some fool or fools, some foe or fool has opened the king's their golem chamber and left it treasure exposed. You watch as the rift expands downward, slowly approaching Sabic Palace. We have much to do, says Zalek grimly. First to the arena, and then we seal the rift. Where's the arena? Okay, we're going up then. He charges off, expecting you to follow him. To your right lies the Temple of Ulus, looking in peaceful in the morning light. Okay, so this is the temple. You remember the temple was circled heavily on the Starlet's Door map back in Undercity. So do we want to stop? I think we want to stop Starlet's door favor now because we understand that uh, the Dragul, because we understand before that Dragul was like, uh, their home world was like destroyed by the Starlet's door. And then that's why they came here attacking. And then, or do we want just, do we, do we want them to just let do it? Let's try to go up. Let's try to, to go to the arena first. Okay, let's go up. So let's go to A and read entry A. So let's get the XP. Hopefully we don't die this time. Before you leave, you are greeted by Mentrock, the Minotaur gamekeeper and his partner Shorta, who are arriving to work at the King's Guard's menagerie. They both look up in awe at the rift in the sky. Okay. You know, Mentrock says to his mate, I've been reading up on the prophecy since the invasion started. Listen to this. Ye shall know my time is nigh when red moon floats through Sobek sky. Can't get more specific than that. <laughs> I don't know, say Shortstep, scratching his head. Could mean anything, really. While the Minotaurs debate Ancients verses, you find an old pry iron leaning on the wall of Mintrock's shop and decide it might come in handy. Reveal Discovery 89. Yeah, I keep remembering that. Discovery and title. I guess I was... I... Uh, Mixed them up last time when I had to get a lot of titles. It's a try iron. Cost one stamina. Okay. Shuffle the familiar deck and reveal three cards. Place them face up. Okay, the familiar deck. Place them face up next to the adventure map to create a market. While at location A, you may buy cards in this market for their price. If your king's favor is two or higher, the price of each card in this market is, is decreased by two gold. Uh, I don't think I have 
Let's see. I don't have money. Six, six, six. I have only two gold, so no, I can't. Can't do that yet. If we have the title Starlet Hope, which we do, we go to A2. The items there. Remember what the Starlet Tor told you last night in Undercity, urging you to meet them at the Temple of Ulos at dawn, no later. Zalik will need your support at the arena, though. Uh, Zalik will support you, he could face grave danger if he goes there alone. While at location A, you may buy cards, blah blah blah, okay? Buy a familiar from Winthrop and short up, or use an item, or move to another location. Can we pry? Can we open? Maybe we steal an arena? Uh, I do 89. Let's do that. Let's try. Maybe we can steal like from the cage. Is it some sort of cage? One fatigue. A89. You show Mindrog your prior and he doesn't seem to impress. You're welcome to keep it. Might help you build some muscle. Each player adds one stamina to your constitution attribute row, ignoring the usual limit. Okay, thank you. I guess. And then, uh, I think we might want to just go to Tal Taran's arena and just try to help help him. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Captain. Captain. Commander Zalek. Yeah, let's go. Let's go here. What is this? Counter one. So it's what? Four one? Four one. From the corner of your eye, Uh, you notice a movement in an alleyway. Treading cautiously, you spy a familiar halfling prying open an entrance to the sewers. Is it Rose, the blacksmith from Yolip? Her cloak is covered in dust. Uh, you notice traces of explosives, blue stone powder on her shoes, and you see the starlit door insignia on her ring. Seems Rose had a role to play in the cult's plot against Sabek. So we can sneak up on her. Uh, as she is distracted, maybe we have to fight her. Do we want to really start doing this starlet plot? Mm. That's the question, right? Should we just allow her to speak? Uh, maybe let's just talk to her. Four forty-four. See where it goes. You call out Rose to avoid startling her with your approach. You indicate that you mean no harm and only wants to speak with her. If it's two or higher, which it is, add one stamina. If your starlet door favor is two or higher, each player adds one stamina to any of their attributes rows from the supply, ignoring the usual limit. Okay, I guess we put it in intelligence. Skill check, speechcraft to oh god. That early. Yeah, I know. Speechcraft to Okay. Uh we need purple, green, blue and white. We can do purple. Green and one white and one blue. Yeah, sure. One, two, three, four, five. So two purple, two green, and one white. And one blue, sorry. Uh, two purple, two green, two purple, and one blue. Ah, there we go. No, it's blue. Where the hair is the other purple? There we go. And then one random. Oh my god. <laughs> and we get another blue. Okay, at least everything is usable in this case. And get a dice tray in. Speechcraft away. Put that here. Okay, so five, 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 all fives. Oh my geez. There's been a variety here. So a green, green. And the blue. So we can get the blue inside here. That's good. We can get the two iridium here, which is good. So now we have to 
make all of these fives into two, three, and four. We can, I think I have a power to lower the green. So let's try to remove all the uh, one time use first, just in case. All right, remove that, remove that, remove those, 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 all one time use. Oh my God. Let's see if we can, what we can do with this. So we can flip. Runic, we can we have to like do all the runic stuff. Okay, we can flip one to a two using a runic arm amulet. So this can be two using that. Now we have to make the other one. Uh, this is green, and we can reroll the green or flip it. Nope, we don't want that. No, this is a reroll. This is a reroll. This is the flip. Flip the purple. That's for that. To make it a two. And then I think the only way we can do now is uh nope. No changing of colors. Nothing we can flip with regards to the blue. Don't want to, we want to lower it. So we can lower the green using the wand to make it a four. And we need to lower the purple as well. This one, see the jewel dagger. By two, this is by one only though. Hmm. Oh, we can flip it again. Can we flip this again? Make it a two and then increase it. Can we flip it again? Gonna rear all the blue. <laughs> flip the green. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, we can. There's no, no, we can't flip it. We, we can reroll it. We can reroll the purple and see what we can get. Okay, so I think we use this first. Uh, so use those. Take away that. Let's reroll the purple. The heck? What kind of roll is that? My golly. Maybe let's use our jackalope. So that's our second that second now. To get our green and purple die. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Should be green. This is red. Green and purple, this one. Yes. Green and purple. Let's put that away here first. There. All fives. It's a one. Okay. Purple one. If we flip it, uh, we need to make it three, right? Yeah, yeah, we can, can do that. Okay. So that's two dice now. Uh, that's two. And then we use this to flip purple, make it a two. That's one. I think we are using the unholy flail. Since it's a one, increase a black or a purple die by two. So it will be one, two. Where's the three purple? This one. There we go, a three purple. We are okay with that. And then we use the jewel dagger. Sorry, not this one. We use this uh, to make it a 
for green. So we spent two, that's three, that's five, exactly. Limit is five and we succeeded. So that's a dice limit of two. We get an XP of two. Okay. This is gone, thank you, temporarily. And let's go to 448. Rose agrees to talk. Rose shakes your hand. Today's mission has been a success so far, she tells you. Please make sure you attend to the needs of the palace. There is an object of power hidden there. Rose takes her leave politely and, and escapes into the sewers. Reveal title card 33 and plus one on the starlight. Saboteur's accomplice. Oh no. We're delving deep now. After Terrence Arena was destroyed by a massive explosion, you discovered that the saboteur was Rose, a member of the Starlet Door. When you found her, you did not attempt to prevent her from escaping into the sewers. Pa -pa 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 -pa. And rest? Uh, nope, I don't think so, not yet. And we just move on to the other location. That way. Let's go to Terrence Arena, B. So it's here. We have the keyword temple, nope. Uh, we go to B, get the XP. Thank you. As you race toward the sounds of chaos, the rift above the palace splits open further, revealing the swirling sky of another world. There is no telling what might happen if it grows wider. We must finish our business here and hurry to the palace, says Zalek. King Tyron will need our help. At the arena, you are met with a harrowing sight. Today's combatants have escaped through a massive hole and are creating havoc in the streets. A humongous ogre overturns a fruit cart and stomps on its vendor. A gang of goblins throws chunks of rubble at everyone inside. Zalek draws his sword and charges at the ogre, leaving you to decide what to do. Zalek is a skilled fighter, but it's unlikely that he can take down an ogre alone. If the goblins are left unattended, though, they will certainly harm many residents of Sobek with their rubble. Uh, record the keyword arena. So I think we save the citizens right that's our goal for the moment right so uh we sh he should be able to handle himself even though he says he might not I think we confront the goblin b3 you leave the ogre to zalik and approach the goblin gang one of them throws chunks of debris while you sh while you while shouting taunts at you underneath the rubble you can make out the arm of their fallen friend it seems the others are working to free him Help, they got their friend. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's dig a hole. Let's dig a bigger hole. Strength and Constitution, B8. Uh, let's go to B8. It says here, you raise your hand in a sign of peace. Let us help you. Let's, uh, let us help you dig him out, you call. The goblin seems confused at first. When you sheath your weapons, they see you, they see you mean no harm and wave you forward. The fallen goblin is not well. He is badly hurt beneath the rubble and must be freed quickly if there is any hope that he will live. The stones are heavy and the work is hard, but you exert yourself without pause. Uh, if you're one or higher, each player adds one stamina to their constitution attribute row, ignoring the usual limit. Skill check, endurance too. Okay, another skill check for us. Uh, endurance too. Endurance too requires uh three greens, three greens, two red, or a black. Uh, why not? That's given for two greens. That's our one green uptick there. That's bad.
and then two reds. One red, one black. And let's do two reds instead. Be on the safe route. There we go, and then two random ones. Be lucky, be lucky. Hey, we got a familiar. Thank you. Yeah, familiar is multicolored, I think. As far as I know it is, let me double check. Yes, it's at the same time. So it's already it's already a purple and a green. So I'll take that. Now let's see if we can get this insurance test. Help with goblins. Okay, so we get a four. We get a four green, which we can actually put there if you want to. And then we get a two red, right? And then, okay. Can we do with a two white? Can we make it into a two green? Uh, we can change any any color to red or purple. Oh wait, can we? Oh, we can, we can change the red to any color. Yes, that's what we want. Change this to a green. Change that to a green. We cannot uptick it. We need to manipulate the red first, right? But I should remember we don't have anything to manipulate red. We can change three or four to any color. So if we need to we can do that. We can change anything, any color to six. Any color to six. Wait, wait, wait. This might be useful because Oh, it'll be white, right? It'll be white six, then we can flip the white six. So one, two, and I flip the white when we can flip the red. Can we flip the red? I think I can flip a red. We can use this spike shield. We can lower the other one and as well as another one. So this is going to be four. We can increase one. This will be six, right? And then this one will be three. Should we do that? What can we do with a three green? Ah, yes, we can flip a red. So we can flip the red and then change its color. I think that's the way. That, that's one way. So this is six. And where's the other one? This one. To a one. That's the one. This is here. Let's see if this is already. Need to lower this by two. Mm -hmm. you can change it to green immediately, but then we need to lower it. We have the way to lower it, but it will be only by one. So far, we've played two for that one. We can manipulate the white to a five. Need a way to find change color, change color, change color. Can, uh, these are two greens, right? Yeah, sorry. Keep on 
two greens. And we need a red there, right? So we still need two things to do. Or we can lower it for one. Or actually we just need to, to flip this green. I think we have that. Can use the dagger. No, no, the the runic stuff, the runic stuff. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We roll the green. Maybe we can do that. Stick robe. Change green to any color. Ooh, honorable. Change green to four. And think this one. Yes. Flip a green. So we're using a runic necklace. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's use our runic necklace to flip this to two. So it fits there. We're using our honorable to change green to red. Goes there. And then we are going to be using our diplomacy first. Six into one. And then changing using our relentless to make this a green. So all fits there. Good. Didn't spend much. We get two more XP again. I don't know where we're going, why we're helping the goblins. <laughs> I guess we're just following true, right? I think I'd rather help them rather than the other one, the Starlet's favor, I guess, because they, they're the one who like destroyed the... Uh... Okay, so now you free the goblin while he still draws breath. So B15, B15. You successfully dig the goblin out of the rubble. His friends express their gratitude and pick him up together. To carry him away, running towards the palace with the ogre by their side. When they are gone, you turn to see Zalik wounded, but still standing and not pleased with what you've done. He raced off toward the palace without any word. Amongst the rubble, something shiny catches your eye. You find a shard of reflected glass embedded in the head of cabbage. You remove the shard and decide to take it with you. Reveal discovery card 84. Yeah, he's Alex is seeing what I am doing now. Eighty-four. Ooh, it's a shard of reflective glass. Look at that. Okay, so we have now an iron and a shard. Reflective glass. Plus one to the Draggle's favor. We record the, the keyword shame. <laughs> okay, shame. Shame. And we can then use an item or rest. I think we should be resting before we go to the arena, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. And it's half. Half of our health. Or we just continue. I think we continue. Let's try to continue first. Because we even haven't used a play limit and illusions, right? So we can go to the Ulas or we just go continue to the palace gates. Let's go to the Ulas first and see what we get. C. Just find out what they're trying to do. Temple of Ulas. Otherwise, collect the XP from this location. Or six, seven. If you have the keyword arena, C2. Built long before the strife between Nalos and Drago, the wide columns and dooms, dome ceilings of this temple enclose a massive sanctuary populated with statues of all many gods of every race in Ulos. An elderly Kaika priest speaks from the darkness behind you. I'm afraid your starlit door friends have already come and gone. They took the eye of Ulos with them. The priestess points to an open Dergolium door in the temple floor. Traces of blue energy linger in the air above. A cold breeze blows through them. With the eye of the Ulos, they can open a rift to Ictel, plain of frost. Meanwhile, King Tyron has somehow managed to open a rift to Afril over his own palace. May the god save us. The priest wanders off, mumbling to herself. Beyond the columns of the temple, you see a gigantic bat circling in and out of the rift above Sabek. Palace. Alone in the temple, you find the focusing lens at the base of Kint. 
satire god of wine it seems someone was studying this idol closely reveal discovery card 76 okay that's a lot 76 hey wait maybe we can use the in the arena okay they all use they all provide this is the one we got they all provide some sort of stamina you can use the item maybe we can try to use the uh, we can use the focusing lens and the glass for one stamina let's try that maybe that will help so it's that c7684 c Seven six eighty four. With, with the reflective shard, you're able to direct light through the focusing lens. It creates an interesting effect when aimed at the jewels that ornament the statues of the gods. Aiming at the ruby in the chest of Octok, Ark of God Stone, you send a spray of red beams across the whole temple. And that's it. Um, can we prize something? For free. C89. So we pay one gold. It occurs to you that you could try to pry the gems from the statue. No one in Sabek would care too much if you stole from one of the Drago gods. The idol Elrol Ekazat, Lord of Cobalt Fertility, has some particularly nice emeralds, but perhaps. The gods themselves would be displeased. Mm, let's leave an offering. Let's leave an offering. It's fine. We know we can do it. You clear the cobwebs from Elrock Alcazar's statue and light a small candle at its base. You aren't sure if the cobalt for two little blessings will help you, but you feel oddly invigorated and have a sense that the god appreciates your attention. All player increase your constitution attribute score by one and add one stamina to your constitution row from the supply. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Dealing with the gods is always bad. Uh, plus one to Dragul's favor. We're at five. Oof. I don't know if that's good. Uh. Guess we can go to now to the palace gates, right? That's the only thing we can do. Maybe we go back to the arena first. Let's go back to the arena. If we go back to the arena, what does it say? Uh, they have the keyword temple. We don't. Otherwise, continue reading. I already did that. Uh, if there is no XV, B1. Uh, let's use the. B89, right? Let's see if we can clear some rubble here. B89. You find a crate and pry it open. There are a few apples inside. They are crisp and sweet. Each player return three stamina from your fatigue box to the supply. Hey, it's worth it. It was worth it. Thank you. So I guess we go to the palace gates. Let's go to the palace gates. Let's see what we get here. This is encounter number four. So adventure four, four. If you have any of the titles hated by trolls, trolls four or trolls ally, I have trolls ally, go to four five. Beyond the corner of rubble strewn street, you hear a tremendous crash. When you peek around the building, you see a gigantic mass of green skin and flying debris. If you have the title Trollfo, advance to 460, otherwise 48. Here are Urza and Songak, two giant trolls you recognize from Yolev, tearing apart the street around them, doing as much damage as they can. You cry out in surprise, and they turn their attentions to you. We're not hated by the trolls, so 
410. The troll seems delighted to see you and stop their distraction to approach you with open arms. Urka reaches into a large leather sack and pulls out some of the loot they've gathered. She hands you some coin and the trolls linger for a moment. Sangat points to Grintaker, the sword they gave you, in the shadowy cave near Yolev. She smiles, trusting that you put their weapons to good use since they saw you last. Trolls bid you farewell and return to their destruction of Sobek. Gain three gold, okay. I don't know why I should be proud of that. Should I be? Uh, rest or move on to the next location? Uh, let's move on. Go to the palace gates, see what we can do. Uh, D. D, 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 D. The palace gates. You have the keyword rubble, you have the reboot cabbage, advice. At the palace gatehouse, a group of goblins and a massive ogre do battle with the palace guards. On top of the palace wall and a well above the fray, several nobles have gathered to watch the battle as if it were a bit of sport. The arena has come as today, you hear one of them comment, and the other nobles chuckle. Safely behind the palace case, they have never known danger, not even during the worst years of the Dragon invasion. Over the heads, the rift is steadily widening and creeping lower in the sky. Meanwhile, both palace guards and Dragul are fighting for their lives below. Let's yeah, let's help let's help the join the palace guards and fight the dragul D14. I think the other ones we were just trying to help them always, right? So see if we can try. You join with the guard in attacking the dragul. The ogre lets out a tremendous roar and brings his fist drawn upon you. The goblin leaped about, tearing at you in a frenzy. Plus one with the king's favor. Now at three. Combat cornered ogre and goblin. Okay, cornered ogre and goblin. So we get 22 and 42. The ogre. Yeah, we fought a goblin before. And a goblin. Ogre hits hard. So we prioritize green for the ogre and black. And they have both the cornered. At the start of the skill, add a random die to the dice pool. This does not count against the dice limit. Thank you. So now, what do we want? Should have rested. Should have rested. We have 14 to play. Else. Okay, so we want. We want to make sure we get a green. So we use Constitution 1. We want to make sure we want white and one red. One black, we want one black, sorry. Want to use that. Let's make it two blacks just to be safe. And we got two more randomly. We got a blue. Bad. Don't need blue. We want something else. We got another black. It's okay. And then because of the cornered attribute, we get one, which is a purple. Doesn't really help much. At least we get all the blacks here and cover them up. Okay. Okay, we get something good here, I think. Uh, we get a five. Um, okay, so let's try to prioritize. We get, we need to get a green to six. 
we need to cover the black five. So like this. Uh, you can change any color to six. That's what I have, I think. Wait, so we have runic. Let's see what we can do with our runic stuff. Um, runic, so all in one go. Okay, so we green, purple, and black. So we can reroll and flip it. So they flip this as a four. No. So, so that's the only thing we can do. With the purple, we can change it into a six if we want to, then convert it to a rip, something else, right? Three, six, seven, eight. This is the problem is the four damage there. If we flip the three, it's a four. We don't want four, we want fives. Can we convert anything to white? We can convert any red to any color, any green to any color. So let's do this first. Let's all do this in one go. So for let's remove this black moment. Let's reroll purple, green, and black. So that's our first card limit. Okay, you got a six, three, and three. I think that was the same thing. Mm-hmm. Can make any color into a six. Let's make this into a six. Place that there. So this is done. Second that second card. Um Change any three or four into any color. What if we change this into a five to a red? I know it doesn't matter. It will be a four only then because of this. Maybe we use this. So that's two dice already, right? So let's remove this first. I'm going to use the Fiend of Confinement. So we draw three red cards. Let's put this back. This cover to rare seven. And we don't want to die today. Again. We draw three reds. One, two, three. Okay, we get. All fours, we do the four.
for another black here. This is a black. Maybe it might be might lose here again or something. We don't know what we should do. We should do. We should do. We will probably. We have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's 18 damage. And we can only spare what? 7, 11, 11 damage. Um, can make the green to six first. Or we can make the red into six. Can't even change the red. Why is it all fours, my golly? And green to any color. So if you change. Okay, I think we changed the red into a white. So that's our third one. And then we just use the. Oh, where's that? Spell book. Increase it by one, so it's now five. So that's uh, one, two, three, four. That's four cards already. Two more. Two more. Where can we reduce damage? We can get another red or a green. We can change the green into any color. It's green, not purple. Change any color to green and red. Purple and red. So we can change this. We need a six to a red. Oh, we do have a five. We can change this into a five. So it's a bit damaging. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Still eleven. Because of that, four damage, right? If we use that. So we need to at least stop this too, right? We have two cards to do it. This is a black. The only way we can make a six. We already have a six. Just need to change the color. We can flip the purple. Can, can we change anything to white? Can flip the purple. Oh, the earth, our thing is to green, right? <laughs> yeah, I think the problem is now is we can't do deal with that one and we might probably lose again. So the only thing uh, only I can change color is this three. So I can change the color of the green, but then we cannot uptick it. Because I can just uptick it if you want to. I can use this or
or just reroll it entirely. Hopefully we get something. We got unlucky there on that one. If you change this to a green, I can only uptake it to one into a five. I think we just uptake the blue. Can uptake a blue, I think. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. How long do we have? We have just fourteen. So we have ten. Ten to work with, right? This is thirteen, so we have eleven to work with. Oh my god. This is hard. It spends two stamina and wisdom. Is there anything we can return here? No, nothing. There's nothing we can return. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Okay, I think we just have to do it. We just have to accept it, whatever happens. So, uh, I guess let's try the purple. Uh, let's put something here because if we cover this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So if we remove three, we'll be down to twelve. So we need to remove two, right? Because we chose this the red, and we covered this. Do that one. Go a white cover that one, and we roll that. And we change this to six. Maybe we can change any color into six. Okay, guess yeah, that's four. We needed to cover that. This is the one that's not. But it's already matches five. Maybe we can just uptick that and put it to a six. Maybe we just change that color to anything else. Can we do that? Change any color to a red. Maybe we just put that there instead. Right? I think that might be the way. And then if we kill this, it will be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's still twelve. It's still twelve. Using this, we use that. Okay. Then I think we need to at least get something to agree. It's probably there's no way for us to change the purple. If we change the green, flip it, it's four. Change this. Yeah, we want it to uptick it. There's no more to uptick it. Okay, I think I'll just have to use my attribute illusionist. One, two. I've been forgetting that I do that. I can change anything. Uh, any color. Change a die in the dice pool, any value. So we can just change this to a six. So then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? I think that's what we might want to do. So that's uh, the fifth card. And then we just use the 
black dye to here, five, there. So now we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Damages for nine. Oof. So we get damage for nine. I think we just use this five. And then use the big one, three and one. We get one, two, three XP for being covering it. Hopefully this. And then one, two more XP for the goblin. And then we just start over. And it only goes on the, or each round. Oh, each round. Okay. So we get uh, six dice again. We are now what? 5, 10, 15. 15, 16. We're now 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Let me change this into three. It's much easier. One, two, three, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-two. Okay, we can use one white if we want to. Let's put one white in, so we're sure. We at least get one white. And the other is random. Okay. Sorry. Oh yeah, we didn't do that one. Get a blue. Get about blue. Give me a reds and greens, please. Red. Any more? White. The one. Blue. And last one. The the green, the black. He said goes there. Okay, let's see what we can do. Uh nothing fits immediately, which is bad for us. Okay. This is red, right? Can change any four or three. Okay, wait. Okay, where were we? So I think since this does not help much at the moment, let's um give her luck. We use the glint taker as well as the realign. So we get three, two blacks and one of any color. I think I'll take a green. One more black. And a green, right? And let's roll that. Oh my golly, look at that. Still nothing, not even matching stuff. Um, so I think what we can do is uh, I think we will lose this probably. Yes, we only have like one health, one stamina because we are on our round two because we have to kill first the goblin. Oh, I think we can still survive. Yes, yes, we can. We can still. Okay, we can still. If we're able to get six green or black, mm -hmm. You just need to kill the goblin, right? And cover two. OK. 
can we flip a green? You cannot tick a green by one. Flip a blue. You can't change the blue to any color. You can take a one a black by one if you want to. We can reroll a green. Let's reroll a green. So that's our third card. <laughs> okay, so this one's dead at least. Now we need to have red and five. At least one, I think. Yeah, at least two. Because we will be back to. That's 23. Yeah, we can only take one health damage to make it 24, right? Um, What else can we do? What else can we do? What else can we do? There's no more risk. There's, no, there's no way for us to change color. We have to uptick the red, which we can't. So I think that's it. Uh, that's it. We take damage again. Sorry. We die again, which is you are thrown aside, right? Combat, Cardinal, Ogre, and Goblin, uh, D16. So we go D16. The Droll overwhelm you and the Palace Guard. They drive you back while the nobles boo from their battlements. The Goblins and Ogres are about to enter through the gate when a wave of dizziness sweeps over you. The rift in the sky above opens wide and races downwards, splitting to the palace itself. The nobles scream and run wildly. The Draggle flee and the palace from the palace. Strange translucent gray figures walk from the rift and onto the palace grounds. The wounded and weary palace guards rally themselves as best as they can, abandoning the gate to rush inward and confront these strange visitors. Come with us, they call for you. For King Taran, for Nalos. Okay, we got exhausted again. Twice. And uh, so let's try to take away this stuff first, right? And let's read that corresponding entry. We corner the way. And these two. 22 and 42. Oof. So far, the, both battles that have two people was like very it's very hard. So where were we? Um, and this one. So we read the death two. I think we have to go here, right? Death two. We return through a veil of fog to a filmer to a familiar hallway, cold and dark. Yikes. The old woman approaches you once again from the darkness with her bag of marbles. Back again already, she asks. Oh dear. The woman pulls back her hood, revealing her gray hair and wizened face. Her eyes are empty sockets, black and bottomless. You recognize her from legend. She is Kethra, goddess of gates and thresholds. I fear you maybe not belong of Azima's world, she tells you. But her world desperately needs its heroes. I cannot let you pass just yet. Kethra pulls another marble from her bag and hands it to you. The creature inside is uncomfortably cramped as if it has somehow tied its own limbs in knots. These aren't easy to catch, you know. Use them wisely. Fog rises around you and the woman fades from you. Reveal rare card number 26. Uh, it's another one. Of any color. Fiends of ineptitude. Roll one die and remove all XP from your party journal that exceeds the result. So P high. Three. So we remove everything but three. Uh, 
then remove all oh, I didn't rest so we roll one more die again six wow that you roll high that's where she rolls high Okay. 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 And record the keyword passage. Face up. So where were we now? We were at I'm not that one. Where's the other one? Where were we? Oh, I forgot now. Cornered order. So we went to defeat D16. Okay. Rest. We want to rest. You have six. It's okay. We can't. We don't need to rest. We just move on to the other location. So we go to the palace. Guards, palace gates, palace gardens, palace gardens. We get this XP. We go to E. The palace gardens, ordinary a place of beauty and tranquility, now serves as the eye of an otherworldly storm. The rift crackles over its stairs towards into the king's quarters to the east. Screams and calls from of alarms comes from that direction. By contrast, the great hall to you. Your south remains silent and undisturbed by the rift. No visitors from beyond the rift walk the garden with you, but it seems something passed through recently. The remains of several plants still hiss and steam. Juice to corroded gray glop in trails that lead toward the king's chambers. On a pedestal in the center of the garden rests a magnificent mirrored chest. Through a round spy hole in, in front of you, you see a colorful glass wand inside, reflected many times over in the mirror interior of the box. The royal gardener Mendel, an elderly elf woman, whistles while she attends the garden. We will discover cards 9 and 33 and place 1 XP on each. What happened there? Why is it? 9 and then 33. says three circles so it's here okay great hall the other one is at Taron's chambers so it's four the top this it connect so it goes here what's so four and it goes there So I have to go through here. I have to go back to the palace first and then go back. So I have to go to the Great Hall first before. If your uh, king's favor is two or higher, Mendel will trust you with a secret. If not, you can use an item. So you can use uh, 76 and 84, both. Focusing lens, maybe. Okay, let's try that. After fitting the reflective gas shard into your wand, what, into your wand? 76, 76, sorry, 76, 84. Uh, with the reflective shard, you're able to send light into the focusing lens and drag its beam toward the mirror chest spy hole. E66, so we'll go to E66. Within the chest, the beam bounces among the mirrored faces passing through the wand and its many reflections. An incredibly glow emanates from the keyhole. Sorry, let's put another XP here if I before I forget. 
and the lid suddenly pops open, revealing a glass wand to the light of day. It is lovely to look at. Small plague inside the box reveals wand of truth. Each player returns one stamina for 50 bucks in supply. Thank you. Reveal and discover card 67. Oof, it's a wand of truth. Look at that. And move on to another location. Move to another location. So I cannot, I have to move now. So let's go to the Great Hall, I guess. Go to the Great Hall. G. Great Hall. If you have the lever, not yet. There is no XP. There was collect XP. It is eerily quiet in the King's Tyrant's Great Hall. In contrast with the chaos of colliding worlds outside, this hall is silent as a tomb. The heads of many Dragul generals and warriors are on display. These are King Tyrant's many trophies collected at each victory for Nalos during the Long and Bloody War. Within the remains of the bugbear and a dragon, a recessed alcove have been roughly boarded up and the words, Do not remove by order of Tyrant have been sloppily painted in red. A Dergolium seal decorated with ancient symbols graces the center of the false floor. If you have either the Trolls ally or the Hated by Trolls, go to G3 first. Above the door, at the other end of the hall, hangs an empty plaque, black, engraved with the words Troll of Yolev. We have the keyword Grey Folk, which I don't, otherwise G7. The silence of the hall is broken by a tremendous boom and the screams of palace servants running through the gardens. Someone help me comes the cry of a chambermaid. The king is in danger. That's it? Jeez, okay. Um, we can use an item. Let's use the wand of truth. Maybe it does something. Uh, 67. Your wand, you, you wave the wand of truth around the great hall and the many of heads of Hydra begin to squirm. The plague under these, the plaque under these trophies reads, Mortish Skothang, who led a thousand cobalt soldiers over a broken tooth pass, slain by King Taran. So watch the king's name vanishes and a new name. Bistum of Orkholm appears in its place. So he, he did not do it. Someone just did that. Okay. Uh, maybe we just use the glass because it's free. G84. What does the glass do? Look to the shard at the end of the Gorgon. She was blinded in this world by King's Guard soldiers. In the reflection, she wears a blindfold. The snakes on her head writhe in your mirror and her face con contorts in a silent scream. That's it. Uh, I think we might need to use our fry iron, right? Maybe we can find something because... Can try to remove this boarded up stuff with our prior iron. So we use one more thing. And it's G89. It says here, you set the prior iron against the wooden planks covering the alcove and pull them away. In the space behind them, you discover an ancient Dergolium lever. Pulling the handle, you hear a grinding sound like turning metal gears beneath your feet. Recover, record the keyword lever, lever. For us, reveal discovery card 11 and place one XP on it. Okay, discovery card 11. Ooh, Chamber of Illusions. Where is this? Three here? Wow, okay. Where else can we go now? Sorry, where's that? It says here, we can rest. We don't want to yet. 
can move on to the other location. We can use other items. What is still a good combination? Um, I think that's the only one that we can do, right? We, do we break the glass and the iron, or do we just use something like? Well, they're still here. Bugbear, a dragon, border. And that's it. There's a troll. And then someone asking for help. Uh, sure, let's go to the king. Let's go to Tyrant's chambers for first F. Uh, get the XP. The rift that split both sky and palace divides King Tyrant's private chambers in two. On the one side, members of the palace guard surround their halfling king who stands on his bed with a pack on his back and no crown on his head, as if prepared for a journey. He holds a jar of gray matter in one hand and a dergulium turned tuning fork in the other. Right, okay. Across the room, the translucent gray figures walk across a uh, purple stone archway from another world into the king's chambers, while gigantic brown bats circle the air behind them. The gray figures touch everything within reach, dissolving objects as if pouring acid from their fingertips. As each, as each object melts away, visions flicker through the bodies of these strange invaders. One of them dissolves a lamp, and its body is br uh, briefly filled with a vision of Taran frantically writing letters by the lamp's light. Another creature dissolves a pillow, and its chest lights up with a vision of Queen Amalia, Taran's late wife, lying awake at night. The figure approaches the palace guards and reach out toward them. Record the keyword, Greyfolk. Okay. Greyfolk. Uh, record the keyword, stand back and wait to see what happens, or join the palace guard in the vents of your king. Yeah, sure. Let's defend him. F7. You step into the battle against these strange visitors. Special combat. The following combat will redirect you to a new storybook entry after the first round. Make sure to read the three possible outcomes once the first round is complete and turn to the corresponding entry in the storybook. So Grave Folk 24. What are these things? Whoa. Scary dudes. Look at that. They popped out. So require two blacks, blue, white, and black. Okay, so I guess we need to defeat it in one round. <laughs> That's our plight. So uh in order to do so, I think. Uh let's use our two black. Two. One blue. And two white. Sure. And that's our dice limit of five. Okay. Hopefully we can get something here. Be something good. Okay, we get one, three, four, five, and one. What can we do with this? The three can easily go here. All right. We can flip that blue. Um, and flip the blue, right? 
round marker on the front one. Uh, now we want to make the red the black. Ooh, we can use this for that instead, right? Can we do it another one? It's increase only, right? And we need three blacks as well. Can do it here. So this, that, we can decrease the black, put it there. Right? So that's two of them. And then that goes there. So we just need to make this into a three. I think that's what we can do, right? Uh, I'll do make the five into two. Ah, we can use our signet. Make this a two. So we just need this to make into a three. The white. We can uptick the white with one. We can uptick the white. We can uptick the white. As far as I know, we have that ability. We can uptick it by one to make it two. Do we have another way? So we're using three dice. We can only you can you can only three use three more. We just need to make this one into a three. How do we make one into three? Change the white to any color first. Let's see. I'll take a green once. We change it to a black, and we have to change it back to a white, right? Change any color to red, and then make changes to a red. We can't do it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If we change it into a three, we can change any three to white. So first, can change the white to how many things that we can change. Uh, we can uptick. Um, this is the other one. Maybe we can uptick it to if we change it to a black, can we change it to a black? We have three card usage, right? Oh, we have two green optics if we want to use, but then that's one, two, three. That's our limit of six. It's three and four is together. Maybe we just use the fiend of ineptitude. So draw three dice. So let's put this back. We do six. I think that's the correct way. That means draw three dice. A random die. So draw three random die. One, two, three. Give me a, give me a three. Can convert it into white. We have a two, three, and three. Perfect, I think. 
So now we can convert the tree to a red and the red to white. So that's one, two, three, four, five plus that one. That means our bonus play. So let's do that. So first, uh, this goes here, and we jewel dagger this into three. So that's one. Then we use diplomacy on this to make it six. Oh, wait. Oh, is this a black? Black, right? I think so, right? Yeah, yeah. So we use this to, to signet. And then we what? Where is this? Uh, we use the tree to make it into a red and the red into a white. I think that is it. We can do and that's six cards. Sorry, not signet, but manipulate to flip a white to a two. Yeah, there we go. Na, 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 na. So we get one, two, three, four, four XP. Oh. One, two, three, four. Hope that's. But I didn't lose much, so I just use one main one and the other one. So that's the other thing. There's a way. Grave folk is dead. Okay, victory at the end of the first round. You drive the invaders back. Leave any placed cards in your discard space. Oops. So, one, two. Where was that? Three. I think that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's this two, not this one. F9, okay. You gain the upper hand against the strange creatures, You, but the palace guards melt away one by one beside you, while their memories flicker through the translucent flesh of your opponents. The gray folk begins to pull together a large unified monstrosity now presses forward with a dozen corrosive arms stretching out to encircle you. Your nerve begins to falter. Find steadfast in the trait deck and add it to one of the player hands. If that card is not available, reveal one random trait card. Let's see, steadfast. Okay. Decrease the party's member combat dice limit by one it's permanently. Okay, F9, sure, sure, okay. By one, that's bad. We're back to four now again. Redu return all dice with a value of three from Grave Folk to the enemy card to the bag. What, 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 what? <laughs> that means we have to defeat it again. What was the end of Grave Folk again? Sorry, I should have not replaced that. Uh, 24. Oh man. The value of three, so all these three. Okay, so make sure let's say that this two and six is covered now. 
say to use a that one and the blue, right? Place the round marker on the second space round track. Okay. And we try to defeat it again. So now we have four. Combat dice limit. Uh, we need a white. Don't over have white. This is okay. Now what do we want to do? Four, five, six, seven. We need to have a black. We don't have a black anymore. We have, don't have a white. So we can get two. Let's put two. One. Two, I think. Yeah. Is there anything we can return to our hand? The decks. That's it. So we get one black and one white. And the other one's random. One white, one black. Okay, we get two now at random. Purple, need something good, leaf and the blue. Not good, I said. Six, three, six, and four. So now we need, okay. Can change any color to a white. Can change this to a white if we need to. Right, using steadfast, and then oh, oh, wait, 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 can we still reduce black? Can we still reduce black? Uh, can reduce white by one? We can flip black, we flip black, it's three, yes, okay. And then we just use illusions. Okay, we flip black by three. We get one more XP again because of that. Then we use steadfast for this to change it to a white. And then we change the six using our illusions power return to stamina from your intelligence. Make this to a three. And gaining one more XP again. And that's it. So you drive uh you drive out the transport gray invaders F3. Drive back the strangers, invite invaders while the palace guard melts around you. To surprise, to your surprise, King Taran leaps through the rift. He sprints across the archway of purple stone, deep into the strange world beyond. Farewell, he calls you, and don't worry, I'll find my way home. Okay. The grave folk follow him, and the rift seals upward as it somehow <coughs> sorry, as if someone were sewing it close from the floor to ceiling, leaving you alone in the king's chambers. In the hallway, a terrified chambermaid looks and, and sees you standing weapons drawn over the bones of the palace guard. Her eyes grow wide, and she runs away without a word. Quest is complete from now on. We can move to the end. Uh, let's do a quick rest, I think, for two. Let's do a quick rest for two. Okay, we're covering eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Put this back up, put this back up, and everything to my hand. And then we return all of this stuff. Clear the gray folk. Uh, we can use an item here in Taran Shaper. Maybe we can use the Wand of Truth. F67. 
Where is that? F seven. You wave the wand of truth over the melted remains of the gray folk. Within the remains, you now see movement as if the life force of the creatures persisted, even though they can no longer hold their form. And that's it. Okay. That's one XP and one stamina. Uh, what else can we use? What do we have? We can use the seven, the, the both combination, right? The same thing, uh, the reflection. So it's uh, F7684. You direct light through the lens with your reflective shard and focus the beam on the gray goop of the king's floor. When you pull the focus tight enough, the goop sizzles and steams. The smell is most unpleasant, but makes you feel more intellectual somehow. Each player increase int attribute score by one and add one stamina to int. Ah, okay. Cool, 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 cool. So we are now five. Ah, five. Okay. Uh, I guess we go back to H, right? Let's go back to H. We haven't been here, so let's see what we can find since here. If you have the keyword vanished, no. Uh, X gets the XP. You send a spiral staircase beneath the seal in the Great Hall and find yourself in a long chamber with fully mirrored walls, floor, and ceiling. At the end, and the end, at far end of this chamber, a golden chest rests on the pedestal. No matter which direction you look, you see an infinite repetition, repetition of your own doubles. They tend to tread uneasily through the hall towards the Degurlum chest. Suddenly, you find your way blocked by knights in sparkling armor who seem to appear from nowhere. Push, pull, strike, or struggle, you find you can't make contact with these knights, but they force you to back to the stairs. Once your feet are off the mirrored floor, they march back to some unseen alcove in the depths of the hall as the knights return to their post. You notice that they make no reflection in the mirror that summons you, that surround you. Okay. Maybe we can use the. So they make no reflections. Maybe we can use the seven six plus eighty four again, right? Let's let's have this here. So let's put one. So so it's H seven six eighty four. Slide the reflective glass. Seven six sorry 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 seven six seven six seven six seven six. With the reflective shard, you're able to direct light through the focusing lens. The beams cut right through the these knights, but they remain unmoved. We use the lens, the 67, this one, the focusing lens. F H67. Where is it? 67. You wave the wand of truth around in the air and the knights vanish completely, clearing your way to the treasure at the end of the mirrored hall. Each player return one stamina from your fatigue box to the supply. There we go. Because it, it, it's the truth, right? Continue to H90. You open the Dergolium box, but the earth does not shake. No energy crackles over your head. There is a circular shape in the dust at the bottom of the box, where a jar once sat. Near the circle sits a lovely but not otherworldly brooch. Though this bit of jewelry is not from another plane, it still casts an attractive spell. You pin it to your clothes and immediately feel newly alive and pretty. As if the brooch were lending its charm to you. Reveal ca rare card number 42. Vibrant. At the die of your class, color to the dice pool. And reveal, record the keyword vanished. And then we may then rest or move. Uh, I think that's the best. That's the only thing we can do here, right? So that's the use of the focusing lens. We used the D89 already at the temple of. Ulos. We use the. What else can we do? I think we just go to the end. We do we mind these encounters? Do we just go back and see what we get? Why not? Right? We're completion or we're trying to be completionist here. So we go here, going to the temple of Ulos, but we have to encounter this first. So it's a encounter four three.
You have either the Creed Savior or Creed's Hunger, which we do. You hear a call for help and run a four, go to 4 6. All right. In an alleyway, you see a wrath born noble stumbling in the colorful lights and scarves. When they stabilize themselves against the wall, you recognize Creed, whose countenance has transformed since you saw them last. In fact, they do not seem well at all. So, it's Creed's Hunger, we go to 417. That's not good. That's not good for us. Might fight again. You approach Crete and find them staringly, hungrily at a pig tied to a post. The animal has a black spot in the shape. Uh, it's the same. It's the same pig. Shape of a swan. Crete has grown fangs since you saw them last, and their eyes are cold gray. It seems the young noble found the bite they were after, and now Crete's hunger drives them to drink the blood of a pig. Uh, I want to stop Crete from feeding, so we go to four twenty. You step between Crete and the pig. The pig seems grateful. Crete, not so much. Infected Crete. Crete is number eight. I hate Crete. He gave me my first defeat. And you take away the infected. Oh, infected. So green, black, red, and any blue. So I guess we just provide one blue. Uh, let's put two black, be sure. And then a green and a red. Wait, the combat that limit is four. It's four, so I have to remove one. Let's remove the red. Put the back one inside there. Okay, it's really have to be two rounds, right? Two rounds. For each time in a player spends with adding the dice pool, they must add one time into their fatigue box from the supply. So we added what? One, two, three, four. So we need to add four more. So we are now what? 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we need to survive 24, right? So 20. So we need to survive 5. So 4, 5. Please cover 1, 2, 3. We need to cover 3. Hmm. Maybe we remove one. Let's remove one black. Remove two, put that one back there. You on the safe side and then go one randomly. And for white. Four, six, three, and five. We get the green five. Oh, it's a green. The blue goes here. It's fine. It's six black goes there. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I think how we can do is we can I think what we can do is use the six. Can we go? Green, can we convert green? I think I can convert green to any color. This, I can convert that green to a black if I want to. Right? 
question is, can we then convert four white into a green? Can convert four into any color, so we can convert that into a green. And then, can we manipulate green? Can we get, can make a, uh, we can flip. If we flip it, it's three. Then we can reduce it twice. Can flip green, I think. First, my make green flipper. Green flipper. Let's go roll this one. So we're using one, two, three, four. That's fine. So we're using this to change the color. Sorry, this one to change the color to five to black. Then we are flipping it first to three, right? And then reduction twice to a one. Wait, how do we change the color then? And then we change that to one, two, three, four. We can change that into a green. How do we change that to a green? So we're using this. Is that the only way we can do it? No, oh, he used resolute instead, right? Yes, that's what I was doing. So we flip, uh, it was four before. So it was four before. That was that was my plan, not these stuff. So it was four before, right? And then we use resolute to change it to green. So it's there. Then for the green, we flap three. And then we use spike shield to two, and we use wand to one. Right, so we get one, two, XP. And then we get damaged by one, two, three. One, two, three. Now it's round two. And we just draw four more. One, two, three, four. Okay. You just need five. Give me a five. Give me a five. Any five. Okay, we got a six, two, four, four. Uh can't do that because we have we can we have the ability to change anything to red. Where's that? This is my ability, anything to red. And we just up <coughs> to one to five. Change that into a red. So this is now a red. We get one gold for that one. Whew. Killed you, Creed. Creed. Able to kill Creed. He's a real, he's the first one. I'll always remember Creed because he's the first one who killed. Killed us. Okay. Oh, where's that? Where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Infected Creed. There we go. Uh, four twenty-five. 
Preet flees from your from your blade and you turn your attention to the pig who looks up at you with warm, friendly eyes. Somehow you get the sense that she doesn't belong here. Tied to this post, and yet it might be dangerous to release her given the current state of Sabek. Do we untie the pig? Hmm. It might be, says it might be, right? So that's just fine. Untie the pig and let her go. 427. You untie the pig and she looks at you with a gratitude and ran off into the streets. There's something odd, almost human, about the look in her eyes. Pig thief, someone yells at you from a window above. You flee, hoping the pig makes her way out of these chaotic streets and find a happier home somewhere. Uh, I think we need to rest before we do something. Might die again. Uh, we rest for two. Let's put that there. Reminder, we did rest. It's the lousiest rest. Lousiest rest. That's barely a rest. That's a nightmare. Uh, we have to go to Talos, right? Temple of Ulos. Let's go back to Temple of Ulos. Maybe we see something there again. Uh, if there is no XP, C1. Did we rest again? Uh, I think, did we use most of the everything here? Can we use the pry iron here? Is there something to pry? C89? I don't know, I forgot. C89. It occurs to you that you can try to pry. I already did this, the Emerald. C17, yeah. Um, uh, let's try to do the last one, right? Why not? Maybe I think we, we rest one more time or two. Just want to recover more stuff. Six, finally, two, three, four, five, six. That's much better. Let's see what this is. We go here and say encounter two. Uh, four, two, we want this encounter two. Do you have any of the Lady Amilisero? Yeah. Lady Amilisero. Go to 4 7. We have the 4 7. If you have the title Lady Secret, nope. If you have either the title Corinth Spire, Corinth Spire, or Secret Corpse, nope. Lady Amelia Dentum, Royal Councilman, walks in the center of an otherwise quiet street. Her eyes are unfocused, her face hangs heavy with sorrow and fear. She must have received word that her daughter died in the catacombs last night. Do not know if you were named as the, the, as the executioner. The councilwoman is without guard, distraught, and alone in these dangerous streets. It's not clear how she might react if she recognized you as her daughter's killer. Maybe it would be better for you if she didn't make it home. Why would I do that? Uh, Offered to escort Lady Amelia home. So let's do that. 439. Constitution and Charisma. Okay, so green and purple. 439. You are, for, you are for to escort Lady Amelia home. She looks at you like you might be telling a joke. Of course she doesn't want to go home. You will have to convince her. If your Drago, is that? If your king's favor is three or higher, each player adds one stamina to their curse magic throw from this plan. It's not. Skill check. Spell craft. Speech craft too. Oh my god. QRS. There we go. Uh we need purple and green. Fine, let's put two purple, 
to green. Green, green, purple, purple, and do we want white or blue? Uh, let's go white instead. And we get one random one. Be good, place. Be good. Let's do that. And then let's do one, two. Let's combine the green so we know what we have, and the red and the white. Okay. Looks like we we have one here which we can work with, and I think we can do that. We can manipulate. We can use one item. We can use a spike shield to uptick one green, making it two, and down tick one green, making it four. Ah, oh, it's just one item. And then the purple. The purple, the purple, the purple. Can we do the purple? Oh, we can uh, increase the black or purple dye by one or two. We may increase it to two, making it a three. So that's that. And then finally, we just want to have to make the white six. We can change any color into a six using our Jane God lens. So we can change this into a six. And that's it. So we get two XP from that. And it's like we convince her to go home. Let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, where was it? Speechcraft. This one. She re reluctantly agrees to return home. 441. Lady Amelia hears the wisdom of your words and agrees to go home. When you reach her estate, she gives you a few coins for your trouble. Three gold. That's it. Uh... Go to barracks. Let's go back to the barracks. Before we go back to the final stuff, maybe we can do something here in the barracks. Barracks. Okay, A1. Mintronk and Sharpter are hard at work feeding the uh, and cleaning their beasts. We can buy a familiar if you want to. Let's do that. Let's try to get a familiar first. See, we get another one of those shuffle ones. So we shuffle this familiar. We get two. We can buy two. We have money for it, right? That's blue and green or blue and black. Um, the blue and green. Let's do the blue and black. Blue and black it is. Blue and black. So we'll take that for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have three gold now left. Let's put this in our deck. This goes back. Okay. Put that dice inside. Uh, did we use the? I think we already used the prior iron for this one. Can we use the wand of truth? Let's use that. Let's have some. Let's play around on this barracks with everything. 
Let's do the six to seven. You wave the one of truth over Mintrog, and he suddenly looks perplexed. You know what? He says, I never wanted to be a gamekeeper. This was all my father's idea. He seems very upset. <laughs> what if we do the lens and focus focus it away? What what would that do? Like you 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 do the one of truth on the lens? Does it does it go back to you or is it does it uh you know do something else? Let's do uh Two? Oh my god, cost two. Jeez. Okay. So that's A6, 7, 76. You place the focusing lens in the curled notch of the wand of truth. Okay. Everything suddenly looks more crisp and clear. You see Mintrock's thoughts materialize. He seems to be consider considering his career choices. That's weird. Can you A90? After a moment, Mintrock decides he needs a replacement so that he can explore other options in life. It seems he thinks you would make a good gamekeeper as anybody. Teaches you the skills of his trade. Record the keyword trained. Okay. Trained. Find and trap in the skill deck. Oh, free, 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 free stuff. Uh, and add it to one of the player's hands. And trap, and trap, and trap. Here. Look at that. It's uh, manipulates one and four to the other side. I'll take it. And then you can then use another item or what? Um, Uh, let's go to the Tarrant's arena. Maybe we can do something else there. Where's that? Uh, if there is no XP at the discussion, B1, that's it. I think we just go to the end, right? If we go back to the B, we go back to the palace gates, do we get something? If there is no XP at this location, go to D1, and then we can maybe use the same thing again. Let's use the wall. And oh, there's no, there's no more here, no more here. We use the D7684, right? It's one XP, D7684. With the right shard, you're able to direct light through the focusing lens. You can even target individual fish in the moat and the beam. They don't seem to like that very much. <gasps> and I think we just have to go to the end. Uh, so let's let's read the end. That's the only thing I can do. Don't remember anything else. So is that the end? Go to the end. Up. Before you know what is happening, you are surrounded by palace guards, all of whom point their spears at you and insist that you lay down your arms. You comply and see the chambermaid from the palace standing with their captain behind them. You see the rift still slowly creeping upward as it seals itself back into the sky. That's the killer, she says, pointing at you. She explained that she saw you, weapons drawn, standing over the remains of the palace guards who died in King Tyrant's private chambers. You protest and attempt to explain the true circumstances of Tyrant's disappearance, but your pleas fall on deaf ears. The king is indeed gone, and now you are to blame. A guard shackles you and escorts you to a prison wagon. Once you are locked in the cart, Begins its slow journey to call back person. If you have the keyword defined, erase it and reveal a title card 36. We do not. Uh, okay. Which titles did you earn? Zalex Witness, Saved by the Rift? No, we only have one. <coughs> Zalex Laws, Zalex Hand, Zalex Executioner. You don't even have a Starlight stuff. 
saboteur's accomplice only, right? I did not miss anything as far as I know. Because, let me double check. Like before, right? It did miss all the other things. When we killed uh, F, 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 F. Yeah, because we did the victory in the first round. We went to F9. After the F9, find steadfast. We decrease the party member, return all dice. If you're playing with a legendary, no, place the round marker and we defeated it. And we went to F3. And that's it. It didn't give us anything. So the only thing we have is the Saboteur's Accomplice. You look down at the still smoldering rubble of Tyrant's arena and wonder where Rose is now. When you met her in Jolib, you did not suspect that she would lend her hand to an act of destruction like this. But, but you trust it was all for a good cause. You take some comfort in Rose's freedom as the Jailer's cart leaves Sabek behind. That's it. How can I have only one? That's so weird. We have the Starlet Hope. Nope, Starlet, Starlet, Zarlex Loss. Okay. On the bumpy road beyond Sabek, you drive your driver is stopped by a messenger who hands her a note. After reading, uh, reading it over, she passes it to you. It's from the High Council, she says. They have your trial already and you've been sentenced to death. You'll be held in Coolback's prison for two nights, then you'll be hanged. Yikes. On your arrival to Coolback, a dozen of construct guards march you into a multi-floor cell block packed with dragul prisoners. Hey, I'm a construct. No kobolds and insectoids lean over railings to watch you as the guards take your belongings and put you in an itchy gray uniform. You receive insults and threats from, their, from the tiers above. Kulbrak prison is not a friendly place to a member of the King's Guard, though through a barred window you see a fresh rope thrown over the old gallows. You'll need to find a way out of Kulbrak to avoid that grim fate. Dun 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 dun! Erase all keywords. What is the use of the trained one, right? That's it. Return all stamina cubes, yes. Dying twice now, three and four straight. My God. Didn't expect that. Yeah, I know. Uh, return all map cards. Thirty-three, nine, and eleven. Eleven. Nine, then thirty. Return all cards in the active space of the party. Journal to the deck. Oh, even these stuff. Yeah, for us. Eighty nine. Oh, why is that the other way around? Six, seven, eight, eight, nine, eighty-four, seventy-six, seven, four, seventy-six, and sixty-seven. All returned. Turn almost poke into the party journal. Yes. Uh, make the box on the comping track that runs past the current adventure completed over oh, already on four. Which pair may now advance to the character. We can now advance it if we want to. How many do we have? Uh, well, we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Or five. I think we just have to advance our combat dice limit by two, make it six. 
two four five two four five. Yeah. So we just use those ten XP for six. And we have one left. Can't do much with one, I think. Uh, if it's less than 25, right? I think if it's less than 25, then we can upgrade it by one. If XP's current health is if less than 25. Okay, so we can use the one to make it 25. So next time it's like two XP. At least we max we max that already. Maybe we can buy something from the market. Let's see if we can get something. I'm just gonna do random if we can buy it or not. This costs four. We have three gold, so no for the armor. For the skill check, let's see. Costs eight minus int. Our int is five, so it costs three. We can buy it. We can flip a blue or white. Possible. Just do a scroll. Maybe we can buy some. Maybe we can buy the scroll. Let's see. It, nope. Pet stone skin costs eight. Maybe we can get a trait. Let's see what we get. It's gnome. We're not a gnome, so it's cost six. Cannot buy that. Lastly, a weapon. What do we get? A sling cost five. Nope. So I think we will buy this knowledge costing three gold. So we have not have any and that's it that was a <laughs> grueling match uh died again second time around now i guess we really need to be careful right we need to maybe rest per encounter if we're like five or ten over especially we're 25 that's like half the health because most of the time one battle will if you just go past the second round you will get hit like for 15 or something Yes, uh, so that is the Eye of Ulos. We actually did not get the Eye of Ulos. This the king <laughs> ran away. I think he has it. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Have fun. Join us next time.